Lance Cormier is with us. Good morning, Lance. Taking a taking a break from the gym work to, to join us. We appreciate it, man. Oh, uh, no problem, man. Good to have good to be with you guys. I'm actually headed there right now. Hey Lance, um, you know, you and I talked a little bit last night to prep for this interview and and what happened, regardless of how you feel about the Greg Goff situation, what's done is done. Okay. He's no longer the baseball coach at Alabama after just one season. The task now for Greg Byrne is to move ahead and, and find the right coach and get someone in here and try to kind of get this thing on the right track. Because let's be honest, you change coaches two years in a row. Um, not only does that show that you probably don't have a great program with Mitch Gaspar deciding to resign last year and then Goff being fired this year, but your recruiting is kind of in a mess. You're you're in constant transition. Um, you know, where do they go from here? Well, I think you said it best, the transition and just being constant transition is something that you know, no pro- no program can handle, no matter how good, you know, your infrastructure was and how good the recruits were, no matter how good the season was. So doing that and um, like you said, well, I mean Coach Golf had the you know, he had a he had a tough task at hand when he was coming in and trying to, like you said, turn the program around and it was starting to recruit better. The rankings said it and obviously it, it all to me it all comes down to development, but the rankings were saying that it was doing better. So now you're at a point where you got to figure out how to keep the kids because now they're going to see some, you know, all this transition and turmoil going on. And now, hey, well, do we want to put ourselves, you know, as a, as a dad and a mom, do you want to send your kids to a program that um, just got, you know, a coach resigned, another coach just got fired? Is that a thing where you know, are you going to get those players? And if you if you don't, then how are you going to react to that? You know how fans are. I mean, they always overrate their program. It's just the nature of being a fan. You see best-case scenario. And, and Bama fans see that $42 million stadium. They think of the history and the tradition of the program. Uh, two national runner-up finishes in college baseball going back years ago when Alabama was, was in terms of wins, uh, you know, the dominant program in the league. But the reality now is you're 18 years since there's been a trip to Omaha. Um haven't won an SEC championship in, in 10 years or so. You've gone through two coaches in, in consecutive seasons. You're, you've got 11.7 scholarships with no wiggle room. Is this job very attractive? I mean, how you know how attractive is this job for baseball coaches? I know there are guys at mid-major level, like Greg Goff was, or assistants, but for a top-tier sitting head coach, if Greg, if Greg Byrne decides to go in that direction, is this a very attractive baseball job right now, in your opinion? I think when you look at it, um, you can look at it two ways. So yes, it is a very tough job right now because you, you know you're competing in the best conference in, in, in college. I mean, maybe tied with ACC. You know, year in and year out, you're going to compete with ACC on, on teams to go to the, the regionals. I and mean, you could look at almost ten this year, um, trying to set a record. But you're right, and when it comes to a, a true overhaul and turnover of a program, it is a very tough thing. You're dealing with the scholarship issue that everybody. Talks about being 11.7 with no wiggle room, meaning some other schools have state lotteries or in, out of state tuition waivers, and that's one thing that Alabama and Auburn have to have to fight with. And so sometimes you got to go juco heavy, sometimes to, to to get things going. Or what? How I like to put it is, you just can't miss. You know, other schools can miss on a big prospect. You give Alabama and Auburn, if you give a guy over 65, 70 percent scholarship, he needs to be a guy that's going to come in and be an All SEC player. If you give a guy that kind of money and he comes in and he lays an egg that freshman year and everything and just doesn't ever pan out, like he, the program gets put back a year. So if you all of a sudden miss on one or two, man, you're you're really down and you're having to have those walk-on type guys develop. And so if you, so it's your thing where I guess development is the biggest thing for me. But in the sense of looking at other guys that want to be head coaches and seeing the amount of money and the um, – just what the athletic department has to be able to do at the University of Alabama, it does. It can make this job appealing to a lot of people, and especially guys that like there's a lot of coaches that really just absolutely love a challenge. And it don't matter how hard things are, and look at it as being even harder. I mean, I know when you look at Coach Saban when he came here, it wasn't like Alabama was the you know world beaters. And at the point, I mean, obviously the the, the history in the past, but he knew that there was people here that wanted the program where it was and would spend the money to get there. He knew he could build it. So if you trust what you can do and you, you just believe in your system and how it can work, the money is here to help you do it. Lance, uh, I find it interesting that Greg Burns stood up there at his press conference and said, hey, 
you know, the next coach that we hire is going to have to make tough decisions. They may not be popular decisions. People may get upset, but that is what he'll have to do. I find some irony in that because that's what Greg Goff tried to do. He tried to make some tough decisions. Uh, They had a bad year on the field, and he's out after one year. I mean, what kind of message does that send to a potential coach that, you know, if the players get upset and the parents get upset and the fans get upset and I have a bad year and uh, they raise some cane, uh, they'll cut you loose at Alabama. They, they won't, they won't see it through to give you an opportunity to turn it around. Now I know it's easy to say, well, the next coach will get that opportunity, but Greg Goff thought he would get that opportunity and he's out. I mean, that's a, that's a bad message in my opinion. And it, you know, again, whether you agree with him being let go or not, the perception of, of it right now could be negative if I'm a coach looking at this Alabama job. Oh, you, that's absolutely correct. You talk about negative because it is definitely eye-opening for any potential coach to come in, whether you're talking mid-major head coach, uh, trying to go after a, you know, a big name, which I think is going to be really tough just because of what the program's going through, or a, a, a top assistant. And you, you have to go, huh, there's going to have to be some hard conversations in that administrative office to say, look, I mean, we see what, I mean, because all these coaches, that's a big fraternity. They see, they know, they talk to each other. It's like, so, I mean, it's going to ha- get out to, hey, what happened is like, well, I was told I had this much time to, to try to turn over this program, and I got one year because this happened. And you're right, it's going to have to be some hard things done. And, and because, you know, it's just when you, when you have a full regime change, you got to get people thinking the way you want to do it. And if that, if it takes some things to go, and I think if you, you might ask Coach Golf, could he have done some things different? You might say yes, you might say no. And that's just, that's, if, if that's how he believes his process was working, and, and I think he really believed it was working, um, but just it takes more than a year, no matter what you do. And so I think when you look at a new coach, new coming in, it, their eyes are going to be open. But I think a lot of times, too, is the social media part of it, and being able to anybody knowing everything about the program, is, is, to me, is one of the worst things. I just don't, um, you know, when it comes down to it, you want to have the coaches involved and the staff and the players. And that, that you want to have that little where you're in your foxhole and that's it. We, what happens in here stays in here. We go at it. We work hard. And sometimes that's not happening these days. And, and a lot of that has to do with social media and, and everybody going to it and, and can run and have a voice, which is cool in some ways, but in some ways can really bury some people. And I think I, I really love to be, you know, you always hear that, that cliche of what happens in the locker room stays in the locker room. I believe that to be true a lot more than, you know, especially now. And if that could happen, and you have the right guys coming here with a with their program, their process to say, hey, this is what I need. You know, there is going to be some hard conversations with with, with Greg Byrne and the other administration, and you know, trying to convince the coach saying, yes, we will give you this time. Former UA and Major League Baseball pitcher Lance Cormier, our guest here on the Gary Harris Show on the Bud Light Hotline. All right, in your role as an analyst on television, you you saw a lot of Alabama clearly, but you saw other SEC teams too. Um, we know about the five wins in conference, but we also know about all the one-run losses from a pure talent standpoint. Lance, and I know you don't have time in your mind to factor in who will come back in all this, but is Alabama closer to being a good team than we think? As far as, when I say good team, I'm just saying at least 500 in the league, 15 wins. Or are they more the team that we saw in terms of a five-win team? Where Where's this team at talent level-wise compared to the other teams in the league based on what you saw this year? Well, I, I think they're definitely at a deficit when it comes. You take the top you know, six programs, and, and when you're thinking of that, you're thinking of Florida, LSU, Vanderbilt, on any given year, probably your top three programs. You throw in a South Carolina, Mississippi State, now Kentucky, Arkansas. I mean, those are seven programs. Now, you're talking top half of the league, but that's also top 15 of the country. So that's the stuff. I mean, when you see 15 wins in the league, thinking, oh, 500, oh, that's just not real good. Well, I mean, Auburn finished at one win above 500. They were sitting at number four in the country at one point. So that just shows you how good the depth of our conference is. And But you're right. It, they're definitely on the bottom half of talent level. But sometimes, I mean, talent to me always wins out in the end. But there's certain years that you play the right game, you get the right bounces, and you make the right plays, pitches, hits, and all these things. And you, you squeak out six, seven more wins because you're in the game. And that's just that's just being able to fight and always playing to the end. And so – Take away the talent. Yes, they could have easily won eight more conference games this year that they lost either by one run or two runs and were in it. And was it a wild pitch? Was it just a simple, uh, you know, physical mistake? Or was it a mental mistake that cost them the game where one team just wanted it more? And that's 
that's where it'll boil down to at the very end. You got to just take the, you got to go take that game and not let someone take it from you. So, yes, the talent needs to increase, but you can't say that they didn't have enough talent. They had guys returning with some, some good arms. You know, the arms didn't produce like they did the year before. Now, what the reason that is, no one knows. You know, only they know of how they were pitching. But you know, you you have some hitters there. I think it's just got to go get the get the game at that moment and not let it slip away. Lance, Greg Byrne has a great reputation uh, in athletic circles <clears throat> for being a baseball guy. You know, what he did at Mississippi State uh, with John Cohen, what he did at, at Arizona with, with Jay Johnson. He said the other day in the press conference, you know, we finance our baseball program at a high level here. The, we know the facility is as good as there is in the country. How important is it now that he sell baseball, not just to a potential coach, but to the fan base, to the people in this league that, yes, we're committed to, to building a winner at the highest level. How much and how active should his role be, you think, in in building the perception that Alabama's all in on baseball? Uh, I think it, it needs to be real active because it can be great. I mean, when in, in the 90s, you know, the late 90s, I mean, that place, the Joe was absolutely packed, and that's why the rip, you know, that's when all that expansion stuff started because we were packing that place out, 4,500. I mean, you're talking, we were getting 4,000. It wasn't tickets sold. It was 45. Standing room you know, only. Yeah, 4,500, I said 1,000. 4,500 butts in the stands. And you had people there. Midweek games, I mean, it was packed. So the place can be there. Coach Murphy and the softball, uh, the softball program show you that people love the spring sports. I mean, what, what better go sit out there, you know, in early spring and then there's just a, as the sun's coming up, I mean, just great weather sometimes. And especially this year, we didn't have that many hot days early on. So it wasn't like it was so hot. We couldn't go watch baseball or softball. So. People want to go and, and, and have shown that they would support the baseball program. Obviously, with $42 million stadium, I mean, who doesn't want to go to that place? It's one of the best places in all of the country with amenities and everything for fans. And so, yeah, he, I, I think it just – but it all comes down to a winner out there. And once you put a winner on the board, you know, on the field every single day, then that's what's going to bring the fans. You know, no matter how active Greg Byrne is, how active the new coach is and selling himself, you can sell your program all you want, but until you start winning, that's when. And then all of a sudden, the program will start selling itself. Finally, um, and we touched on you know the talent level and, and where this program's at. Let's say you get a catch in a coach in here, and he does energize the fan base, much like Avery Johnson did in basketball. And there is a lot of of excitement. We saw that with Johnson. Yet he's going into third year, still no NCAA tournament appearances yet. Um, if you get a good guy in here, he starts recruiting well. Uh, I know this is a tough question, Lance, but but how long before you can you could get back in a regional? Is it something that maybe, if best case scenario, you could do it right away, or is it a, you see this as a three year build, a four year build, a two year build? What what's a reasonable expectation for Alabama baseball to get back to where it's in the postseason? Yeah, it's a, it's a very tough question. I don't like putting you know. You know, at the gym, we don't talk about putting goal numbers in because some people reach goals different ways. So right. you talk about years of, hey, how can you rebuild? You just has, you have to see progress is what you have to see. Because recruiting nowadays, comparative to, especially when we were in school, I mean, I didn't get offered until I was, you know, in April of my senior, you know, after my senior, you know, of my senior year about to graduate. So that's, that's what I signed. And nowadays, kids are getting offered as sophomores and, you know, they're late freshmen here and, you know, looked at me as a freshman or sophomore, you'd have laughed and said, there's no chance you're even going to play, you know, possibly junior college baseball and go, no way you're playing the SEC. Well, people develop. Well, so now recruiting takes it on, you know, to its own mind now. You have to recruit so far in advance. So when a new coach comes in here, he, he doesn't even know any of these guys unless he was in a conference school here competing against Alabama to recruit them. Then he might have that relationship, but it all develops those relationships on bringing the guys in. So, who knows when a new coach comes in this this um, year and will some of these guys stay that they had and now he has to start. Does he play a different style of ball? Is he more of a pitching first, defensive first, or is he more of a you know power type guys and doesn't matter if they can run or we do whatever type of game that the new coach will play, he might need to change some of the recruits up. And so I think, I mean, to, to look for, you, you want to see progress. And, and with Coach A.B. Johnson, he has. And they're a couple games away. I mean, you talk about going get that game. They, uh, I think if he probably looked back, he could probably go, there's four games each year that we should have won. If we would have gone out and got it, we would have won, and we we would have been in the NCAA tournament. And then I think you can get that same way. If you don't get those wins in the baseball during the season, the conference season, because the, the ball can bounce any which way any given night, 
you know, if you get those wins and you make the regional earlier than you expected. But I, I don't like to necessarily be so result oriented because um, sometimes they can be a little skewed. You just got to see the progress and how the players are and what the type of guys you are bringing in. And that can kind of define your program. Well, as we know, the fans are eagerly anticipating the hiring of a new head baseball coach. And uh, I know Greg Byrne wants to take his time and do his due diligence. But uh, right now, upheaval in the program. But uh, you get the right guy in here that can settle down in a hurry. Thanks so much for your time, as always, Lance. Yes, sir.